Hello students. Today we are going to study half wave and full wave rectifier with filter and without filter. First of all, let's know what is rectifier. It is an electrical device that converts AC to DC by using one or more PN junction diodes. So rectifiers are classified into different types based on the number of diodes used in the circuit and the arrangement of diodes in the circuit. This is the classification of rectifier circuits. So rectifier circuits are divided into two as half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier. Then full wave rectifiers are subdivided into full wave rectifier with center tape transformer and full wave bridge rectifier. This is the circuit diagram of half wave rectifiers and its waveform. Here the diode is arranged in forward bias. So half wave rectifier is a type of rectifier which converts the positive half cycle of the input signal into pulsating DC as output signal. Here in this circuit we are going to use the AC source which is going to supply the alternating current to our circuit. The alternating current is often represented by a sinusoidal waveform as you can see. Then we need a transformer. Here we are using step down transformer. Then we need a diode that is going to be connected in forward direction a 1 kilo ohm register. This is how our circuit go is going to kind of look on the breadboard. So we have got a transformer. So uh, in brief I will tell you what is transformer. It is a device which reduces or increases the AC voltage. So the step down transformer reduces the AC voltage from high to low whereas the step up transformer increases the AC from low to high. Here we are going to use the step down transformer because the voltage needed for the diode is very small. In the step down transformer the primary winding has more turns than the secondary winding. So the step down transformer reduces the voltage from primary winding to secondary winding. So then we need a diode which is going to be connected in the forward diode. A diode allows electric current in one direction. This unique property of the diode allows it to act like a rectifier. We are going to measure the output across our The circuit is made on the breadboard. As you can see, the transformer is connected to the positive terminal of my diode and the negative terminal of my diode is connected with the one terminal of the register and the other terminal of the register is connected with the another end of my transformer. In order to see my output waveform. First of all, I need this DSO that is digital storage oscilloscope in which I will be able to see the waveform that we have seen in the circuit diagram. So I have connected my channel 1 of the DSO to the input of my circuit. So one end of the transformer is connected with the positive side of my probe and the another end is connected with the ground. In order to read the output, I need to connect channel 2 I am using as my output waveform. So it is connected across the register. The positive terminal is connected with the one end of the register and the negative terminal is connected with the another end of the register. So this will help us to see the input and output both waveforms in my DSO. I will switch on my transformer that is transformer is going to use the 220 volt that is AC this is the circuit diagram the, that we have already seen I have given the sinusoidal input and then this input signal after passing through the diode is going to be rectified that is we are going to get the half wave so as you can see the blue channel that is the blue signal is my input and the yellow signal is my output. As you can see, the blue signal is the sinusoidal signal and the yellow signal is half wave rectified. So this is the expected output that we need to get from the circuit diagram. Now as we know the half wave rectifier converts the AC signal into DC but the obtained direct current at the output is not a pure DC. It is a pulsating direct current that is pulsating DC. So it is not constant, it fluctuates with respect to time. So this is the difference between the pulsating DC 
direct current that is DC and AC that is alternating current. From this graph you will observe that pure DC has a constant magnitude whereas a pulsating DC has a variable magnitude. Therefore we need a direct current that does not fluctuate with respect to time. The only solution for this is using the smoothening filter. Pulsating DC contains both AC and DC components whereas DC components are useful but AC components are not useful. So we need to reduce or completely remove the AC component by using the filter. The filter is an electronic device that allows DC component and blocks the AC component at the rectifier output. The filter is made up of combination of components such as capacitor, register and inductor. The capacitor allows the AC component and blocks the DC. The inductor allows the DC component and blocks the AC component. In this practical, a filter is made up of a combination of register and capacitor. So let's see what is going to happen when we are going to use a capacitor. This is our same half wave rectifier circuit with filter. As you can see, here we are going to use the AC source, a transformer, a diode that is connected in forward wires, a 1 kilo ohm register and a capacitor parallel with this register that is going to be used as smoothening the signal. So the AC input waveform is going to be sinusoidal and as a resultant output waveform we are going to get this dark black line signal. Previously we were getting without filter this half wave that is drawn with the dotted lines. Now we are going to get this dark line as our output waveform by using the capacitor as filter. From the waveform you can observe that when the capacitor is fully charged it holds the charge until the input AC supply to the rectifier reaches the negative half cycle. When the negative half cycle is reached the diode gets reverse bias and stops allowing electric current through it. During this non-conduction period the input voltage is less than that of the capacitor voltage. So the capacitor discharges all the stored charges through the load register. This prevents the output load voltage from falling to zero. The capacitor discharges until the input supply voltage is less than the capacitor voltage. When the input supply voltage is greater than the capacitor voltage, the capacitor again starts charging. Let's implement this circuit and see the waveform. These are the capacitors that we are going to use as filter. So this is a 22 microfarad. As you can see, it is written on the capacitor itself and 25 volts. So this shorter leg of the capacitor is the negative terminal and the longer leg is the positive terminal. And this is a 100 microfarad capacitor and this is 1000 microfarad capacitor. Let's see what changes in the waveform we are going to get using the different values of our capacitors. So first of all I am going to use the 22 microfarad capacitor in parallel with the register and let's start the circuit. You can see the changes in the previous and the present waveform. This is the half wave rectifier with filter that is the value of the capacitor is 22 microfarad. Now I have changed my capacitor to 100 microfarad and let's see the output waveform. This is the output waveform of half wave rectifier with filter as 100 microfarad capacitance. Now we are going to use the 100 micro, 1000 microfarad capacitor and let's switch on our circuit and see the changes in our waveform. As you can see it's quite similar to the DC signal but this is again not the pure DC signal. In the, this way we are going to see the another two circuit diagrams that is of full wave rectifier and see the output waveform. This is the circuit diagram of center taped full wave rectifier. So a full wave rectifier is a type of rectifier which converts both half cycles of the AC signal into pulsating DC signals. So this is the AC input signal that we are going to get that is fed to our transformer and this is the output signal that we are going to get from the transformer. This signal is fed to our diode and then after passing through the diode we are going to get this kind of signal that is full wave signal. 
so let's learn how it is called the centrifugal transformer so this is my transformer and when an additional wire is connected across the exact middle of the secondary winding of a transformer that is this wire then it is known as the center tra tape transformer the center wire is adjusted in such a way that it falls in the exact middle point of the secondary winding so the wire is exactly at zero volts of the ac signal this wire is known as the center tape the center tape transformer almost works similar to our normal transformer that is to step down or step up our in ac signal so the important feature of our center tape transformer is that the secondary winding of the center tape transformer divides the input ac signal into two parts the upper part of the secondary winding produces a positive voltage and the lower part of secondary winding produces a negative voltage so when we combine these two voltages at output load we get a complete ac signal that we are going to verify from our waveform the upper part of the secondary winding is connected to the diode d1 and the lower part of the secondary winding is connected with the diode d2 both the diodes d1 and d2 are connected to a common load that is our resistor with the help of this center tape transformer the center tape is generally considered as the ground point or the zero voltage reference point during the positive half cycle the diode d1 is in forward bias and diode d2 is in reverse bias so d1 will allow the current to flow through it and d2 will not allow the current to flow through it and it will be switched off so during the positive half cycle current flows only in the upper part of the circuit while the lower part of the circuit does not allow current to flow because diode d2 is in reverse bias so during the positive half cycle of the input ac signal only diode d1 allows electric current while diode d2 does not allow electric current during the negative half cycle of the input signal the upper terminal becomes negative and the lower terminal becomes positive as you can see and center tape is grounded due to this the diode d1 will not allow the current to flow through it and diode d2 will allow the current to flow through it in this condition so the second part of the circuit will carry current and the upper part of the circuit will not carry any current as a result of this both positive and negative half cycle we are going to get a full wave at the output that is across the diode this is the circuit without filter so let's implement this circuit on our breadboard and see the waveform this is the three terminal of the our transformer this is the upper part this is the lower and this is the center wire that we are going to connect with our resistor as you can see and it is then grounded we are going to measure the output across our resistor so let me explain you the circuit the upper part of my transformer is connected with the positive terminal of my diode d1 and the lower part of my transformer is connected with the another positive terminal of my diode d2 and both these diodes are connected at a single place the load resistor is connected at the negative terminal of both the diodes to be connected at the same place and the another terminal of my resistor is connected with the center tape wire of the transformer so let's see the output by switching on our circuit as you can see this is the output waveform that we are going to get across our resistor the blue line is my input signal and the yellow is my output signal that is same as we have seen in our circuit diagram that is full wave using the center tape transformer now let's move the to the last one that is bridge rectifier before moving to the bridge rectifier once let's see using the capacitor what we are going going to get the output waveform that is we are going to connect the filter in parallel with our load resistor circuit is the circuit is going to look like this that is this is going to be our ac input signal and the waveform that we are going to get is going to be this the full wave dc output so the same diode d1 and d2 are connected and a load resistor is connected between the diodes and the center tape wire 
and in parallel with our register we are going to add a capacitor as filter this is the ac input waveform and this is the output that is we are going to get from the diode d1 and d2 and this is the output that we are going to use after connecting a capacitor this is the circuit in which i have connected the capacitor of 22 microfarad now i will switch on this circuit and we can see the output by using the capacitor as you can see this is the circuit that is we have connected using a capacitor of 22 microfarad in parallel with our resistor and the output waveform is shifted a small in small amount now i will change the capacitor to 100 microfarad and let's see the output the positive terminal of my capacitor is connected to the both the legs that is negative terminal of my diode and the negative terminal of my resistor is connected with the center tape wire now i am going to switch on the circuit in order to see the 100 microfarad capacitor output and this is the capacitor output that we are going to get this is the output waveform of the full wave center tape transformer now we are all set to move to the bridge rectifier this is the circuit diagram of full wave bridge rectifier and the waveform so in bridge rectifier instead of using the center tape transformer four diodes are used and this is the arrangement of the diode and the center tape wire is going to be grounded so when the input ac signal is applied across the bridge rectifier during the positive half cycle diodes d1 and d3 are forward bias and allow electric current while the diodes d2 and d2 are reverse bias and block electric current on the other hand in the negative half cycles diode d2 and d4 are going to be forward biased and allow the electric current to flow through it and d1 and d3 are going to be reverse biased during the negative half cycle of the bridge rectifier here we are going to read the see the waveform across our load register so let, let's implement this circuit on our breadboard so this is the transformer and the upper part of the transformer is connected to the diode this is the diode d4 and d1 and the lower part of the transformer is connected with the diode d2 and d3 and this center tape wire of my transformer is going to be grounded so the whole circuit is grounded at the center tape transformer now i have connected my resistor between the anode of the diode and the cathode of the diode the resistor is connected and i am going to see the waveform across my resistor this is the waveform that we are going to get now i have merged my input and output signal and you can see we have got the same output waveform that we have got in our center tape transformer so a question may arise that if we are getting both the full wave waveform same in center tape and bridge then why we are using bridge so the answer is that the center tape transformer has a drawback that is it is very expensive and occupies large space so in order to cut this extra cost scientists develop this bridge rectifier that is we don't need the center tape transformer and at the lower cost we can implement our full wave full wave using the four diodes only